Good morning, good morning, good morning. We thank God for all of his many, many blessings that he has given to us. We, we just want to praise him because of who he is and what he's done for us. He he's saved us from all hurt, harm, and danger, and he has protected us. But before I go on, we have an announcement for you. For those of you who have not received your vaccine, your vaccination, on Monday, uh, Monday at 9, from 9 to 12, the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church will be administering the vaccine. On Monday, from 9 to 12, those of you who have not received your vaccine, please go by New Jerusalem and get your vaccine on Monday from 9 until 12. Do that for me, please. God bless you. Now, this morning, our lesson is entitled, Our Commission. Our responsibility, what it is that we are to be doing uh, within the body of Christ, what we are to do. This is our commission. In other words, this is our marching orders. These are the things that we are to be doing. And our lesson comes from Matthew 28. 18 through 20, and 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. So, and in our, the, the, the point, God sends us to tell others about Jesus. That's our commission. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We are to tell others about Jesus. Tell them, tell them what he has done for us and that they may experience the same thing that we have experienced. So our commission is that God sends us to tell others about Jesus. And so as we as we began, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And it reads, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Christ commissioned us to make disciples as we go through life. That's, that's our commission. He tells us that we are to be disciple makers. And remember, a disciple is a learner. And, and, and what are we are learning? We are learning about Jesus, his character, his mannerism. We, 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 and we are to be examples of all of his character and his, his nature. So first of all, Jesus told us that he has been given all authority in heaven and in earth. Because he has given us all third authority in heaven and earth, he has given us this same authority. And our commission is to go first Go where? Go into all the nations and do what? And we are commissioned 
to be disciple makers. We are to make disciples of everybody that we come in contact with. That's our commission. But then what else our commission is that we are to fulfill the ordinance of baptism. The way that you baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and so go make disciples of everybody of all nations and we are to instruct them, we are to teach them to observe, observe me to obey all that God has commanded us to do. And we have an assurance that he's with us always. So we are responsible for making disciples as we go through this life. The three uh, three lasting truths from Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus commands us to make disciples. That's our commission. He has commanded us to do that. Secondly, we must make disciples as we go about our lives. As we go, make disciples. That, that's part of our commission. And finally, making disciples Making disciples requires both baptizing and teaching. So then as we make disciples, we are to fulfill the ordinance of baptism. Remember, baptism doesn't save us. It's our confession that Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior of our lives. And we are to teach them. The second outline, 2 Corinthians 16 you know, 5, 16 through 19. From now on, then we do not know anyone from the worldly perspective. Even if we have known Christ from the worldly perspective, yet now we no longer know him in this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Oh, the old has passed away and see that the new has come. Everything from God is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ. God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. Our second commission, our second commission is to reconcile. Now, what does reconcile mean? Reconcile means to restore. Restore back to our relationship with Christ. So, so the first part of this says, uh, from now on, then we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective. Our old nature, our old nature ha has been done away with since we this new life that we have in Christ. So, so, and so it's important because of our new life in Christ. We are new creations. The, uh, we, we, we are made new because of what Christ did for us on Calvary. What he did and he reconciled us. He restored us to right relationship with the Father. That's what Jesus did. He, he reconciled. So our commission then is to be restores or reconciled. You heard what I said? The ministry of reconciliation, the ministry of restoring those to right relationship with Christ. So our commission, the first one, we are to make disciples. The second one, we are to be restores or reconcilers. We are to reconcile those who have 
fallen out of relationship with Christ. We are to restore, that's all reconciled means, to restore those to right relationship with Christ. Now, some lasting truths from 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 19. One, our salvation experience changes how we view others. Secondly, through God's initiative and only through Christ can we have a reconciled relationship with God. Restored through Christ only. And reconciliation means God does not count the sin against those who believe in him. Third outline. Second Corinthians 5, 20 to 21. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. First of all, you see that word ambassador. We are God's representative. We are his representative. And because we are his representative, we are to be restorers or reconciling, be, 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 being reconciled to, to God through Christ. Because we are his representatives, we must be reconciled to God. Also, because of what God did for us through Christ. Christ, he did not know any sin, but he became sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God through him. Look, our responsibility as Christ's representative includes calling others to repentance and faith in Christ. That's, that's our responsibility. Because we are God's, we are ambassadors for Christ. And, and, and because we are his representative, we can appeal through Christ and Christ will make it right on our behalf. And so it is important for us to get that. Christ, we are Christ's representative. That's all an ambassador is. We are representing somebody else. So we are ambassadors of Christ. We represent Christ on behalf of others so they can see him in us. We are his representatives. Okay? And because we are his representatives, we must talk like Christ. We must act like Christ. We must give like Christ. We are responsible for representing Christ everywhere we go. We are his representatives. And because we're his representative, we ought to represent him properly. Lasting truths from 2 Corinthians 5 to 20. God appeals for a restored relationship through those who have already been reconciled. 
So then, because we have representative, we must represent him well. May God richly bless you, my beloved.